Hey, what's up, y'all? Our bitch is back. Y'all, I had to take a little vacation. My birthday was Wednesday, August 15th. I am now 28 years old. And on Monday, bitch, I started a second fucking job. So between two jobs, celebrating a new year of life and coming to y'all every week, a bitch was overwhelmed and tired. But I am going to find a way to make all this shit work because I love y'all. And a bitch love her coins, okay? So here we go. Insecure season three, episode one. We are adding a new show to the fold. And this episode was given what it was given. So let's give it what we got. All right, before we get into the show, let me say I love how even though Issa has gone from a web series, Awkward Black Girl to Insecure, she still gives us Awkward Black Girl. She was awkward all up and through this fucking episode, okay? Daniel fucking that girl while Issa was on the couch. Um, Dan, you knew what the fuck he was doing. That girl knew what the fuck she was doing. Here's the thing, though. Issa, you played too many motherfucking games. When you came to that motherfucking, I'ma sleep on the couch at the end of season two, I just knew that by the time the season, as a matter of fact, bitch, when they first showed Daniel's sexy ass pumping and driving in that bitch, I actually thought it was you, bitch. And I was like, okay, so this how we started it off? Issa and Daniel getting it in, and yet and still, here you are, lonely. I'm so lonely. On the goddamn pillow on the couch. Girl, I'm so glad you decided to go ahead and do your lift because, bitch, who the fuck wanna sit around and listen to somebody who you been fucking in the past fuck somebody else? Girl, please. Issa and this job, baby. Uh, Frida didn't glow the fuck up. Frida got the new position on. She got a new hair. She got a new style. And mama got a new attitude. Uh, Issa, I love you very much, girl, and we still here with the shit, but bitch, I just got this position, and I'm not trying to fuck it up. See, that's how you didn't already piss, uh, what's her name? Uh, Joanne. You didn't already piss boss lady Joanne off, and bitch, I, like I said, I just got this motherfucking position, and I'm not trying to fuck shit up, trying to cover your motherfucking ass, so bitch, I'm sorry, but you on your own with this one. And baby, when I say Joanne is mad, she is mad. Issa had got a list of the people who decided to no longer work with We Got Y'all or whatever. So she had called everybody and was like, why did y'all decide to end ties with us or whatever? She got their reasons and then she came up with a game plan. Okay, I'm going to try to salvage these relationships. So let me take this shit to Joanne so she can know I have initiative and I'm trying to start a new project. Baby, when she told Joanne, Joanne was like, bitch, I told you you was on death duty for a motherfucking reason. I don't want you in these streets. And now that you're doing all this shit, I'm not sure that you will ever go back in the streets. Uh-uh, it's a bitch. I understand you had the initiative, and honestly and truly, I probably would have did the same shit. But let me tell you how that story would have played out for me. I would have went in that doodly doodly do, said my one and my two. After she cussed me out, bitch, I would have got my little hefty bag, got my little lunch pail, and I would have walked the fuck out, okay? Lift would have had to support me for the time being because I'm not going to be talked to like this. And all I'm trying to do is make up for the shit. First of all, I don't even think I did anything wrong, okay? I was trying to bring people together and not lose our sponsorship because, bitch, a whole lot of them names was crossed the fuck out. We have very few people willing to work or we got y'all. I finally found a school and because they only want to cater to black people, I'm supposed to just say, fuck y'all? No, bitch, we gonna find a way to make this shit shake. She and Frida, I'm talking about second season, but y'all, I, I gotta go with it. She and Frida should have came up with a motherfucking game plan and they wouldn't be looking like this right now in season three. Molly and Issa discussing Basically, Issa moving in or not moving in at that little diner or whatever. Um, first of all, y'all, this vase is just a reason. Maybe they just can't live together. Mm hmm Maybe when the vase broke, Issa found out for herself, bitch, I can't live with this hoe. She is my best friend, and I love her to the moon and back, but I can't live with her. I got a cousin who I see as a brother. I will never live with this motherfucker. We just can't mesh. I have certain ways of living, he got certain ways of living, and the shit just don't combine. They don't intertwine, bitch. And there will be no peace in a home. So to keep the peace, I need to keep my dick stones, okay? I feel you, Issa. That shit ain't got nothing to do with no vase. And I think Molly Loki know that, bitch, you a lawyer. You smart as fuck. You know goddamn well that a vase was not the reason why your best friend won't come stay with you. This bitch is willing to sleep on the couch and listen to her ex- Situation shit. Fuck the dog sent out of his current girlfriend. And she gotta just lay there and take it. She is willing to endure that than stay with your motherfucking ass. That almost kiss with Daniel and Issa. First of all, I love Daniel's sister. I wanna see more of Daniel's sister. And I wanna know what the fuck she do. She's talking about she gotta be on set. Do you do hair? Are you an actress? Are you a makeup artist, bitch? What is the team? Now, truth be told, I wanted Issa and Daniel to kiss. 
and then commencing to fuck it, okay? I wanted it to be the Studio 2.0. Except for, I love how Issa fucks. She don't give all those, uh, yeah. Like, she don't do all of that shit that the girl was doing at the beginning of the episode. Because that's some pouring out white girl shit. And don't nobody want that shit in 2018. I wanted y'all to really get down and reconnect. And for him to cut the other girl loose, okay? Boom, boom. You out the picture. But that's not what happened. Issa was again. The awkward black girl was like, eh, what is this? I was coming as a friend. Bitch, once you fuck somebody... Mm, you can't really go back. You know, you can't undo that. You know, it's already done. So y'all fucking on a regular basis wouldn't necessarily be out of the ordinary because y'all done it before. You get what I'm saying? Once you fuck the first time, that threshold is open, bitch. And then you living with the motherfucker and you ain't got no man. Molly and Dro. Baby, you want to talk all this shit about boundaries, but you got them already. Dro is married. And he can see your ass when he can see your ass. That's your boundary. You can't cross that line. You can't go fucking over his house. You can't... Well, I don't know if you can sit back and laugh and talk about your sex capades with Candace about Dro. The bitch may very well be into that. But still, bitch, you the one with boundaries. Why you trying to set them, bitch? You have them. Okay? You knew what this was back at the Kissing Rock and Kiss and Tell, whatever the fuck that was and back in season two. You knew then what the situation was. So why is it that now you are, yeah, I just can't know, bitch. See, what should have happened was either you should have been with Homeboy from Get Out or your ass should have stayed with Sterling K. Brown from season two, bitch. But no. You wanted to creep in a pool of draw. You wanted to smoke on you some draw. Bitch, get lit. But draw. Um, baby, you, you, you do realize that Molly is a side bitch. Now, a key was a far stretch, but all these pop-ups and plans that you making, bitch, we can't go public. And don't be popping up, bitch, because the same way I got boundaries, bitch, you got boundaries too. What if you would have turned that key walk the fuck in and my new nigga in here butterball ass naked waiting for me to come home from work? Bitch, no. Don't fuck up my motherfucking judge. You married. Your shit is good, okay? Now, this party left with Issa and Molly. First of all, Nathan, you cute as fuck. Let's go ahead and get that out the way. But baby, I don't know why you threw out big boys blunt. First of all, you don't throw out nobody's weed. I don't give a fuck what the circumstance is, bitch. He should have beat your motherfucking ass. It sucks that he got his ass beat, but you don't throw out nobody motherfucking weed. I will stop the car and beat your bitch ass. I will stop the car from the back seat to beat your ass behind throwing out my motherfucking blunt. No, ma'am, you will not. So, bitch, you seem like you was hot when you got in the car. So what was your beef with him smoking? Was you mad because he didn't want to pass it? Was you mad because it wasn't draw? Was you mad because it wasn't OG Kush? It wasn't your flavor? It wasn't your style? Tell me what was going on. That was my beef with you, Nathan. Now, big boy, first of all, bitch, you get one fucking caprice. Now, I don't know. No, no, no. There is not a weight requirement, and because you overweight, you get two. No, bitch. I don't give a fuck if you do qualify as two people. You get one fucking Capri Sun. And two, beggars can't be motherfucking choosy. And if you so fucking parched and so fucking thirsty, that means your ass was already high because you had cotton mouth. Uh-uh. One blunt was enough, bitch. How high are you trying to get tonight, bitch? The fuck? And y'all, y'all hit me to the game because I ain't never heard of no goddamn fruit. Friends, did you hear me? When I was going to school, my mom was packing my lunch, bitch. I had Mountain Cola. Kiwi. Uh-oh, uh, what? Fruit punch. Mountain Cola was my favorite. But, bitch, I ain't never had no fruit frenzy. And I never had the fucking Capri Suns with the clear back to where you could see. I guess that was too rich for my mama blood. Or maybe they didn't have that in Mountain Yes, they did. They had it in Mountain Cola. Because one time I traded somebody for it. Daniel and Issa, part two. When Issa had came home from all the shit. Issa was finally honest. But in that moment, I realized something about the both of them. Both of y'all are shady as fuck in y'all own way. You turn around, oh, I was just here because he was close to home. No, but bitch, the truth is you knew that he was going to be there and you wanted somebody to be there for you emotionally because Lawrence left your ass high and dry. You cheated on him, tried to get back together, and homie said, bitch, fuck you, and went on about his way, so you needed somebody to pick up the pieces in your life. You could have said that the first time. Y'all was both drunk. Well, he was drunk and you was on your way. So y'all, you could have said that the first time. But then you want to, oh, here's the truth. Uh-uh. And that's why he be so cut and dry with your ass because he know you be bullshitting half the time. And now, Daniel, you are shady in your fucking actions. He said, what is it? What, what do you want to do? I mean, what's it going to be? But then you yacht, yacht, yacht in the bedroom with the girl. Then you send in the heads up text. Then you sit on the couch and y'all watching the reboot of Martin with Erica Alexander. And 
Y'all have y'all little conversation, and I really thought that something was going to manifest, child. But it didn't. You got your ass up, you walked your ass out, and then you was on your merry little way with the new bitch. Y'all both need to stop playing. I don't know, bitch. Because I, I kind of want Issa to fuck Nathan. As long as she ain't fucking that old petty ass peanut head ass nigga from uh, the Dunes, the Charger nigga. Oh, girl, bye. Molly wants her key back. Oh, Molly, you shouldn't have never gave homie the key to begin with. Never. I'm sorry. Mm -mm. And if you did, the moment he utilized it, you should have got it back right then. Don't get caught up in the notions because at the end of the day, Molly, this ain't your nigga. Y'all can be in a full-blown secret relationship on the side, in your house, all up and through on the couch and all that shit. But at the end of the day, he is married. He is spoken for. He is already somebody else's man. He will never, until he divorces this bitch and comes with you, which I do not suggest you ask him to do because, bitch, if he cheating on her, he gonna cheat on you. If he want an open marriage with her, he gonna want one with your ass. Back to the story. Bitch, he ain't your man. Don't treat him as such. Lay your motherfucking law down and move your... I don't understand why the fuck... Are you are you working by Coastal? You working in, in Cali and in Chicago, right? Yeah, that needs to be your nigga. Mm-hmm. I know he ain't your type. You go for these macho, built-ass niggas, but he's more your level. And from what I understand, if a, if a nigga can make you laugh, he low-key your soulmate on the slide. You know, like... He had you cracking the fuck up. And from what I understand, the sex was all right, all right. So give him all you can give. Y'all, that was all that this episode of Insecure was giving. Shout out to Don Richard. I saw you girl in that studio in them plastic pants. I was like, that I'm done. And then right after that, Dawn had announced that she, Aubrey, and Shannon was finna go on tour as DK3. Hallelujah, I am so glad and happy about this. Oh, but then my heart was broken because the day after my birthday, Aretha had, you know, she kicked her last Daisy. Oh, rest in peace, Aretha. But oh my God, DK3, I'm gonna have to get my coins together because I don't think y'all coming to Houston, but bitch, I wanna see y'all nevertheless, okay? But yeah, y'all, that was all this episode game. Same place, same time.